this video we're going to make a linear model for some data about Amazon Prime. As we know, data from the business world can be a little bit tricky because of the fact that they measure data in quarters or months. The data in the table below shows the fourth quarter number for each year of the Amazon Prime US membership, and that's in millions. The table has three rows. The first row is for T, that would be our re-index time, and that row is blank. We have the years 2015, 2016, 2017, and 2018, and then the membership in millions, which is 54, 74, 92, and 101. Now I've given you a variable declaration for the re-indexed time. It's the number of years since 2005, and if that seems a little strange, that's because that's the year Amazon Prime actually launched, which might be surprising to you, uh, but it wasn't aggressively pushed until much, much later. Let's just talk about that re-index time for a second. The year 2015 would normally be T equals 10, 10 years since 2005. But since we're looking at fourth quarter data, which means we've gone through 100% of the year, 2015 quarter four actually represents time equals 11. And 2016 quarter four represents time equals 12, or the, or the very beginning of 2016. 2017 would be time equals 13, and 2018 would be time equals 14. The other suggested variable here is capital M. So let's let M be the Amazon Prime US membership in millions. It is important when you're declaring the variables to always use the units if there are units. This is going to be your Rosetta Stone at the end of the problem when you need to write a sentence or a paragraph about what you found. At that point in time, you'll want to remember things like it's the Amazon Prime membership, that is the US membership, and that it's counted in millions. Anything like that that you want to remember at the end of the problem should be in that declaration. Now the first thing we're going to do here is graph this data. We're going to graph the T row for the data, that's 11, 12, 13, 14, and the membership in millions, that's the 54, 74, 92, 101. Let's go over to Desmos and do that. I'm going to add my table of data here. In the table, I'm going to change the header row so that it reads T1 and capital M1. Now I'll put in my data. 11, 54, 12, 74, 13, 92, and 14, 101. Now I'm not seeing this data on the graph and there is a little icon to the left side of the table that says zoom fit. If you press that icon, it should jump you to a place where you see the data in the table. I've zoomed out a little bit on this table so we can see the time axis going all the way back to zero. You can see that Amazon Prime hasn't always had this level of growth rate. If it had, we would have started with a negative y-intercept. Well, we've graphed the data, so let's go back and see what our next step is. Now we're going to use the data for 2015 and 2018 to find a linear model for M of T. Let me highlight that data. That's time 11 and M54 and time 14 with M101. Let's first write down those data values as two points. The point 11 comma 54 and the point 14 comma 101. I've written them vertical to each other so that it's easy to do the subtraction. Now all we have is two points and when we only have points and we need a linear model the very first thing we always have to do is find the slope. In this case the slope is going to be the change in membership delta m over the change in time. And I know which one is which because the change in the independent variable, which is time, always goes on the bottom. Starting with delta m, 101 minus 54, that's the numerator, and then delta t is 14 minus 11, which is the denominator. 101 minus 54 is 47, and 14 minus 11 is 3. Let's get that as a decimal, shall we? Because we're dividing by 3, it's not going to be exact, so I'm going to use the approximately sign. It's kind of like a squiggly wiggles to indicate that I'm now approximating. 
Let's just round to one decimal place, so that's 15.7. Now we have the slope and we have a point, two points actually. So we should be able to make the linear model. Let's go ahead and use point slope form. Now usually we write y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. In this case, we've got slightly different variables. Instead of x minus x1, we have t minus t1. And instead of y minus y1, we have m minus m1. All right, let's put our data in to the t1, m1, and the slope, which is lowercase m, not capital M. Now we have m minus, and let's just use this top point, the m value is 54, equals the slope, which is 15.7, times parentheses, t minus 11. Now let's just simplify that a little bit. Let's do the distribution. m minus 54 equals 15.7t minus, and then we've got to do 11 times 15.7, 172.7. Finally, we want to add 54 to both sides. I'm going to use a little shorthand here and just write plus 54 under the left side and the right side. The left side will have m by itself, and on the right side will have 15.7t minus 118.7. So we've got our model, and maybe we want to write it as m of t, so let me just erase that m that's there and write this as m of t. Let's actually check out this model against the data that we plotted. Now remember we said that if Amazon Prime had really had this kind of growth since the very beginning, their y-intercept would be negative, and that's what we just found in this model. If we blow up the section that's right around those four points we graphed, you can see that the line that we created goes through the first point and the fourth point, which is exactly the two data pairs that we use to construct this model. So we're doing good. We can use the slope of this model, m of t equals 15.7t minus 118.7, to estimate the number of memberships Amazon Prime gains in a year in the US. That would be the slope of the model. So we would say that Amazon Prime gains about 15.7 million memberships a year. Now, as we've already discussed, this model does not behave as you might predict for the year of launch of Amazon Prime. If this model held going backwards, you would have a negative number of memberships in time equals zero. So I'm just gonna write no, if the model was used going back to 2005, the number of Prime users would be negative at launch. Next, we're gonna use our model to predict the number of US Amazon Prime memberships in 2022. Let's just assume we're looking for the number at the beginning of 22. So that would be time equals 17. So we want to find m of 17. That's going to be 15.7 times 17 minus 118.7. I'm going back up to this model I had in problem two. Let's do that calculation, which gives us 148.2. So we're going to predict that at the beginning of 2022, there are 148.2 million Prime members. It is super important that we say at the beginning of 2022. If we actually wanted the number at the end of 2022 or the fourth quarter data, we would need to do this for time equals 18 instead. The next question is, if the model continues to grow linearly, when will there be 200 million US Amazon Prime memberships? Well, now we're being given the M value. We know that M equals 200, and we wanna know what time gives us that. So we're just going to solve the equation in the other direction. We're gonna solve 200 equals 15.7T minus 118.7. We want to solve for the variable that's there, that's the t value. So let's get the 15.7t by itself by adding 118.7 on both sides. That's 200 plus 118.7 equals 15.7t minus 118.7 
plus 118.7. That simplifies the right-hand side to be 15.7t. And on the left-hand side, we add 200 plus 118.7 and get 318.7. And then our final step is to divide both sides by that coefficient of t, 15.7. So let's just divide by 15.7. That gives us 318.7 over 15.7 equals 15.7t over 15.7. Need to do a little bit of math there. On the right-hand side, it simplifies to be t. On the left-hand side, we need to do that division, 318.7 divided by 15.7. That gives us 20.3 when we round to one decimal place. T equals 20.3 would be what year? Well, that's 20.3 years after 2005. So that's a little bit of the ways through 2025. I'm going to summarize that for you. During the year 2025, there should be 200 million U.S. Amazon Prime users. We're done.